Well, J.D., we hope to get more information from the White House today on these new reports that say a second American was likely killed while fighting with Islamic radicals in Syria. This after the White House and State Department confirmed yesterday the death of 33-year-old Douglas McCain MacArthur. The U.S. is now investigating reports that another American from Minnesota was killed. His Facebook page shows that he is friends with people who claim to work for the Taliban and other terror organizations. And according to Minnesota Public Radio, Abdurman Muhammad was open about the fact that he was fighting alongside ISIS. Their report also says that he was dedicated to recruiting and radicalizing other Americans in Minnesota. The State Department has not commented yet on these reports of the second American jihadi, but they did admit yesterday, as we talked about, that they knew McCain was fighting with ISIS, and they're using every tool they have now to disrupt and dissuade individuals from traveling abroad for jihad. Those words are theirs. As I mentioned yesterday, that is a reminder of the uh, growing concern that the United States has, that many countries in the world have, about uh, the thousands of foreign fighters from 50 countries uh, who are engaged in Syria. Well, that was Jen Psaki there. She added that they are also working to track and engage those individuals who return from fighting overseas. But no one in the administration should have been surprised by ISIS's rise. That's because a new report from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point shows that ISIS had big plans four years ago. Since 2010, ISIS had been recruiting soldiers, merging with other militant groups, and carrying out waves of car bombings inside Iraq. Specifically, the report mentions that ISIS has had far-sighted and political military campaigns on their agenda. Officials say ISIS is a long-term threat still that may outlast President Obama's time in office. And today, some conservative members of Congress are saying they may have no choice but to shut down the government again. That's if President Obama follows through on his threat to use executive orders granting amnesty to millions of illegal immigrants. Congressman Steve King of Iowa tells the Des Moines Register that if the president wields his pen and commits that unconstitutional act to legalize millions, I think that becomes something that is nearly political nuclear. That's from King there. Now the White House and Congress are staring down another budget battle. On the other hand, they must pass a new budget or authorize a continuing resolution to avoid a shutdown. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest called King's threat a shame. But the president is determined to act uh, where House Republicans won't. And there is strong support for that all across the country, from the business community, the labor community, law enforcement, uh, even members of senior members of the faith community, some of whom, many of whom I'm sure didn't vote for Democrats uh, in recent elections. We well, might remember the last time that the GOP dug in and failed to approve a continuing resolution. That was over Obamacare, and that move hurt the party in public opinion polls.